In this video, we're going to talk about the Crookes radiometer, a device that can take the energy delivered by light and convert it into mechanical energy. So this device contains a spindle that can rotate freely, and it contains four veins. Each of it has two different sides, a black side or a dark side, and a reflective side. And it's surrounded by a glass container in a partial vacuum. It's not a complete vacuum where the pressure is absolute zero, but it's a partial vacuum. The pressure is very, very low. Low as one Pascal. At normal sea level, the pressure is one ATM or 101,000 Pascals. So it's very, very low. And this low pressure is needed to get the maximum effect for this device. If the pressure is too low, there's not enough gas molecules in this device to assist it in order to spin. And if the pressure is too high, there's going to be too much air resistance, too much drag force, which makes it difficult for the spindle to rotate. So it turns out that this very low pressure of one Pascal is the optimal pressure that generates maximum rotation. Now let's say we decide to shine high intensity light on this device. The spindle will begin to rotate and it's gonna rotate in the clockwise direction. That is towards the black part of the veins and away from the reflective part of the veins. This device is used to measure electromagnetic radiation intensity. As the intensity of light increases, the speed of rotation increases as well. So thus you can measure the intensity of light based on the speed of rotation because there's a direct correlation. Now let's watch a brief demonstration of this device in action. Now let's talk about how this device actually works. When light strikes the dark surface or the black part of the veins, it's going to absorb the energy. Whereas when light shines on the reflective part, most of those rays will be reflected. They're gonna bounce off. And so dark materials tend to be good absorbers of EM radiation. For instance, on a summer day, if you're wearing a black shirt, you're gonna notice that black shirt gets relatively hot when exposed to the sun. Whereas if you wear a light color shirt or a white shirt, you're gonna remain relatively cool on a summer day. So black materials, they tend to be good absorbers of electromagnetic radiation. And that's how this device really works. When exposed to light, the black side of the vein will become hotter than the reflective part of the vein. And so what we're gonna have is a temperature differential which creates air currents in addition to a pressure differential. And all of these effects combined will cause this object to rotate. And so this device becomes like a heat engine, converting thermal energy into mechanical energy. But you need a difference in temperature in order for this to work. Now, if we place the Crookes radiometer in a cold temperature environment, let's say if we put it in a container filled with ice, something interesting happens. It begins to rotate in the opposite direction, that is in the counterclockwise direction. Let's look in on a demonstration to see this effect in action. Let's summarize what we know so far. 
When a Crookes radiometer is placed near a high intensity light source, it begins to rotate in the clockwise direction, that is, from the hot side towards the cold side of the veins. But now, when placed in a cold temperature environment, it reverses direction. It begins to travel in the counterclockwise direction. Now, why does that happen? The emissivity ratios of the dark side of the vein and the reflective side of the vein are different. Dark objects tend to have an emissivity ratio close to one. So they're good at absorbing EM radiation, but they're also good at emitting EM radiation. Now the reflective surface is not very good at emitting black body radiation, nor is it good at absorbing electromagnetic radiation. So the emissivity ratio of reflective objects like aluminum foil tend to be very low, very close to zero. And as a result, when placed in a cold temperature environment, these two sides, they cool at different rates. The black side will cool a lot faster than the reflective side. And so as a result, the temperature differential reverses. The black side becomes relatively colder than the reflective side. Not that the reflective side becomes hot, because when placed in a cold temperature environment, it's not going to warm up, it's going to cool down. But rather, it becomes less cooler than the darker side. As in the first case, the direction of rotation will be from the hot side to the cold side of the vein. On the second case, it will be the same. It's going to rotate from the hot side to the cold side, but it's going to be in a counterclockwise direction. Now, here's a question for you. When the Crookes radiometer is placed in a cold temperature environment, as it begins to rotate in the counterclockwise direction, the rotation in this reverse direction eventually ceases. It rotates for a while, and then it comes to a stop. Why does that happen? Well, keep in mind, the rotation is due to a temperature gradient. If that temperature gradient is not there, there's not going to be any rotation. So let's assume that initially, before placing this object in a cold temperature environment, that the temperature of both sides of the vein is 30 degrees Celsius. And let's say that the external temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. Both sides of the vein will begin to cool, but they cool at different rates. After 10 seconds, the dark side might have cooled to, let's say, 25 degrees Celsius. The reflective side might have cooled to 27 degrees Celsius. I'm just giving a number to illustrate this. But because they cool at different rates, these two temperatures are not the same. So thus, there is a temperature gradient, which causes this device to spin. But eventually, over time, both sides will cool to the temperature of the environment, which means they're going to be at the same temperature, that is, at zero degrees Celsius. When that happens, rotation in the, verse, in the reverse direction will cease, because the two sides are now at thermal equilibrium. There is no driving force to cause this heat engine to spin. So that's why it stops eventually when you place it in a cold temperature environment. Because even though they cool at different rates, they will both reach thermal equilibrium with the environment at some time. Now let's watch a demonstration that shows the reversal of rotation when the Crookes radiometer is placed in a cold temperature environment and then when it is exposed to light.
So that's it for this video. So now you're familiar with the Crookes radiometer, a device that can convert the energy delivered by light into rotation or mechanical energy. So thanks for watching. And for those of you who want more videos with demonstrations, uh, see the links in the description section below.